Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special mini survival show today, taking a look at the small, tiny world of survival in Grounded and Small Land. Both games at very different stages of development. Obviously Grounded's been out nearly 10 months, they're getting updates every month. We kind of get a look at the stuff with the test servers. I'm going to be talking about what's coming in this week's test server, hopefully going live Tuesday or Wednesday with basically photo mode and some other smaller little quality life stuffs. Also, maybe the future a little bit of the map. And then we'll take a look at Small Land. I've been keeping you guys up to date what's going on with development of this one. Pre-alpha, so lots could change. They're meant to be coming out this year in early access. Another game based in the backyard or a mini forest or gardens. It's not a copy. This actually got announced before Grounded. So I kind of like both games. It's okay. You don't have to say one's better than the other. Just be happy or grateful that we got two great miniature survival games. They have done a sound dev diary and actually more, I have to say, more interesting to me than just the sounds of the creatures was actually showing them. We got a chance to see so many creature models. So we're going to talk about all of that plus the grounded stuff. Timestamps are there if you want to just skip ahead. But I really do think that these games are great and you should absolutely check out both of them for info. And of course me. So let's cover the small land stuff first. They did a dev diary focusing on the sounds. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm never as interested in sound design or music or soundtracks and stuff like that from games. I'm very much more about the visuals most of the time because I usually turn the sound or music off worried I'm gonna get a copy strike. But it was very different actually. The sound designer here, have pretty much explains why it's important to have the sounds of the creatures and recognizing the differences between creatures and not only that they showed a bunch of the creature gameplay which i thought was just just amazing now obviously this is pre-alpha lots can change but there is so much to digest here so let's start breaking it down Oh, and always, I'll leave the links for this dev dive if you want to check it out for yourself and hear what Pav actually has to say. So yeah, obviously this is pre-alpha stuff, a lot can change, but it's the first time Small Land's properly shown off a bunch of the creatures other than that reveal trailer a little while ago. And there's a big selection here, very similar in some of the creatures to Grounded, that's what you kind of expect in any backyard or any game that has you pretty much shrunken down but a snail was a big surprise to me i kind of love it i kind of like the way it's very different from grounded it's very realistic it's trying to be anyway it's not meant to be very cartoony it's meant to be a little bit more sort of you know fantasy based and stuff and there's a whole host of creatures I think these are pretty decent proportions. Obviously, there may still be some stuff they're going to have to change it up and stuff. But yeah, you can do a lot of taming. You can see it pops up. It seems pretty simplistic at the moment. I'm sure that will change. Maybe not. Maybe they really want you not to be like Ark and spending hours of actual real life time trying to get dinosaurs, but instead of actually have more fun with these creatures so you're not sitting around. If you can just go up to it and press tame on it, that'd be pretty cool. But I reckon that'll probably change. I reckon that's just because uh, they may be getting systems still in it. And then we've got like what appears to be another type of ant. Maybe it's the same as the first one. It's just different slight colours. But I think in the past we've covered some of this stuff. They have spoke about different types of ants. And I've got to say that's not too dissimilar. Grounded is doing the same. They're going to be adding black ants to the game very soon. But like the sizing again, it's pretty small. So they are going to be much smaller. So your character is fairly big compared to maybe some other sort of creatures. And this one is the other colour and or a different type of variety. Looking likely it's going to be attacking you. Doesn't like the look of you one single bit. So you are going to maybe have to run. I could be wrong. Maybe these are other bugs. Let me know. And it does look a little bit slightly more different than a ant. The way it's moving. Then we've got what appears to be some sort of stink bug again. Again, much more realistic than I would say in Grounded. I kind of like both styles. I kind of like the light-hearted nature of Grounded and the way that it's very stylized and the bugs are kind of not super comical looking as they have toned that down a little bit, but I still like both kind of variants. I like this more realistic version too. And then we've got more of the wasp. I showed you this to you guys last time, the last video we did showcasing how it takes on the ladybug. You see the parts of it just drop off. See, it's just minding its own business. Here it comes. And it's literally going to take a, a little stab at it. Now, other stuff, obviously, you've got food, you've got water, you've got stamina, and a temperature gauge. So it's a full on survival game. Small land is, anyway, at least. And then, of course, spiders and grounded are fantastic the way they move and stuff. But here, they're equally as scary. I think people with these kind of arachnophobia issues, I don't know if small land's going to do the same thing that grounded did and have a special system where you can turn off the arachnids and have them just looking like does of ball or balls of dough. 
So really cool stuff. Again, this kind of spider, very different. And then we've got a gecko, and this is the coolest part. Now we've seen, I think, this as a rideable creature, maybe in the reveal trailer. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was something else. The choice in creatures that you're going to be able to tame and ride looks pretty big. As we said from that original trailer, it did look pretty interesting that there was almost a marsupial creature that we'd be able to ride as well. And it looks pretty cool. Obviously, it's still got a lot of work to do, but I like the way this guy's kind of moving around. I'm not a wildlife expert. If I've got any of these creatures wrong, then go ahead and correct me. So go and listen to all them creatures making their sounds with Pav talking about it. I'll leave the link for it down below. And absolutely super excited about small lands. The last video I was kind of thinking with so many of the areas being worked on and so much going on it was great they were showing us stuff but it did make me think that oh we're quite a way away from them releasing because they have said they're going to release in early access this year but this kind of stuff gives me a little bit more hope that it could be a bit sooner so moving on to the grounded stuff they are finally adding a proper photo mode now you can access this by using a mod that unlocks commands for the engine the unreal engine but it looks like they finally fine-tuned it and added it as something everyone can use they reckon it's going to be a first stage and this is all coming as part of the test live server stuff now last month they didn't actually have it on the xbox for a little while they ended up adding it like a good while later but it does look like next week's big update as it were, they've been doing these every month, will be mostly about the photo mode and some quality of life stuff, some smaller things that need a little bit adding or fixing. And as I said, I expect the test live server, they said in a stream, they've been doing weekly streams with content creators, that this will be coming early this week for the test live servers. It's great stuff. I think Grounded has a really great look about it in terms of taking photos. Like there's definitely some really cool creatures out there and getting you doing some poses like this. I would absolutely love to see some more content from people taking screenshots without the horrible UI or being able to slow things down a little bit and capture some really great moments. Debs also tweeted out the clip where Adam was talking about the small changes that come in, about being able to pick up arrows. It's a quality of life issue that sometimes doesn't work as well, so they're making that or they're improving that. They're making changes to drinkable water. In fact, if you find dirty water around, you can drink it once a day, but if you drink it a second time, you're going to get a sickness debuff that won't go away until you've gone and slept or rested. And I kind of like this, making the game a little bit more difficult is going to help a lot with people playing it for the first time and leading up to its release and stuff just giving it a bit more of a challenge and i think long-term players want a bit more sort of difficulty with it as well grounded shouldn't be a hardcore game it's filled with story and it's obviously aimed at a younger audience so it shouldn't be a dark souls type game but absolutely having a little bit more sort of positive and negative aspects of survival is really important and then they did speak a little bit about the changes that come into the yard. So we're not going to get the haze revamp just yet, but it does look like that is going to be the next thing they're focusing on. They're working on it at the moment, but it's going to take a while to update and get it all ready. But big changes are happening all over the yard. They reckon that there's going to be lots of things that are popping up around the outside edges that maybe have said, you know, progress, work in progress, don't go along here. And so that's good. And they said lots of this stuff may change. It's just there. It's nice. It's shaping up that internally they're looking at the yard and they're kind of figuring out exactly where everything's going to go and the puzzles and the pieces and all fitting together. It's really cool for me because it means I get to talk about something with Grounded. It is a bit of a challenge at the moment. I'm kind of only doing content on it once a month because we're only getting a big update once a month. And them updates, as good as they are, they're not enough to keep me going anyway in terms of content. So that's why I've been covering other games. But absolutely, I do love Grounded. I think it is a great game. I think it will be an even better game once it's finished. And so I do want to keep you guys informed. So no matter what, even if I'm doing well with Valheim, Rust or anything else, I'm still going to return to Grounded grounded every single month and if they start ramping up more updates or there's more content to cover then i will definitely do some more sort of content based around it i've always said they need a different kind of meta so at least having even more points of interest on the yard is going to be important i have spoken about where or what they might do with the yards in other videos so go and check them out where i kind of talk about some of the plans i think they're going to add for the future but yeah it's nice to see they said they expect some small things to be added it will add a little bit of mystery i can talk about it and then hopefully we'll start seeing them come out in the flesh in the next few months but all that is a way away. They have said that this week's test live update and then obviously the end of month update, don't expect that to be huge other than the photo mode and a few of them small quality of life issues. So there we go. One of my favorite things covering these types of games is looking at how they develop and the different stages. We've got small lands, very much a case of very pre-alpha, 
but showing lots of good stuff that could be coming and it will be releasing later on this year hopefully and then we've got grounded that's kind of settling into its stride it's got its monthly updates down it knows where it's going and it is adding content some months it's a bit smaller other months it's a bit larger like the underwater section or the bees and stuff and i kind of dig both both ways really i reckon small land will end up being like that when it does come out obviously small updates then bigger updates i could be wrong i reckon they've got a fairly small team working on that game and grounded i did say it would have been nice if they could have upscaled their team a little bit and i think they have i think they have added a few more members to it but i wouldn't still expect them to suddenly go ham and start updating the game more than once a month we're going to carry on seeing smaller updates then bigger updates smaller updates then bigger ones etc so two great games, I don't want to compete them against each other, I will be covering both of them for sure, but absolutely I do kind of feel like they can go well together when news is a little bit light. So hopefully you enjoy that, hopefully I've got your interest in Small Land if you haven't seen it before, and obviously if maybe Grounded you haven't really played yet, then maybe you should go and give it a shot too. I may go over the mechanics of the photo mode when it does launch if I've got time this week, but otherwise I'm on a little bit of a holiday at the end of this week. So yeah, I'll see you Ratbags hopefully very soon for more coverage of both games. Till then, layers.